UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to Westwood for another edition of UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm Dave Marcus, pleased to be joined by Allison Taylor. A very interesting show for you today as we're going to focus on women's sports. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at the upcoming events. It's not often that we get to talk about the first year of a new sport, but that's what happened this year in the NCAA as sand volleyball joined the agenda. And two of the Bruin freshmen timed it perfectly. They started their college careers and got to go to the beach every day for training. We're very happy to welcome Rachel Inoue and Carly Drolson to Bruin Talk. Carly, it must have been fun going to the beach every day. Yeah, it was an awesome experience. You know, we, we love indoor, but playing sand volleyball, it's just a whole different atmosphere. And being outside, it's a great experience, so we all love it. You're from Del Mar, and Rachel, you're from Hawaii, so you guys have had plenty of experience going to the beach. Uh, big beach volleyball players before you came to college? I wasn't really. I mean, I only played really recreationally and not, not competitively, but I mean, it's, it's an awesome transition to get to have this opportunity here. Now, we were joking about, oh, darn, I got to train. I got to go to the beach again, but that's a pretty good gig, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice, to be honest, to like get to play on the beach and get to go down there to train, I mean... Awesome. How did it feel being involved in the first year of a new sport? It's an awesome experience. I mean, the learning curve is so high, and we learned so much this year from Stein and Caitlin, and it was just a great experience and a great opportunity to just be part of this first year of sand volleyball. Carly, for those of us who don't know much about the differentiations between indoor volleyball and sand volleyball, what do you consider the, the major differences other than obviously being on a different level of playing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a big difference playing from outdoor to indoor. You have the wind and the sun and everything, but I would say the biggest difference is, is that um, you have two players on sand and whereas indoor you're with your whole team. So for like smaller players like us, we only do like certain positions as indoor, where when we play on the sand, we get to like do more and hit and um, it's like playing more volleyball overall. So it's been a great experience to be out on the sand and just, I don't know, do different skills that we don't really get to experience indoor. Well, Carly, you mentioned you're both 5'6". You know, typically sand volleyball or beach volleyball, you got one player at the net, one player back, but you're both 5'6". You're both basically playing libero positions. You're both all over the place. How, how hard is it for you to not have a big body at the net? Yeah, exactly. In sand volleyball, you usually have like a taller player blocking and then a smaller player digging and doing the defense. So. For us, we just don't block at all, and we just play uh, two-man defense, and it actually works out really well. People don't really know what to do. I mean, they kind of get scared. They don't know whether to like hit it hard or roll shot because we're just staying back every time. So, and also sometimes we like fake it and like pretend to go up, and then we pull off. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's worked well for us, and sometimes it's difficult with um, bigger hitters, but. I mean, we've done it well so far, so we're going to continue on doing that. Rachel, your coach, Stein Metzger, who's one of the great players in volleyball history, called the two of you Team America. What did he mean by that? <laughs> well, he coined this term in practice 
I think it was after some like really long rally we had. I think the term originated from the fact that we're two smaller players, obviously, and we don't exactly have the greatest ability to just put the ball away and like slam it down like you know six four players can. So we um, often have really really long rallies. I think that's what makes us really fun to watch. And since we're so small, people root for us because they want us to beat the tall girls, you know. And so he just started calling us Team America, and it, it stuck. <laughs> Carly, we've been talking about Coach Stein Metzger and Caitlin Nielsen, who also played volleyball here in her career. But what do they do to prepare you guys? I mean, it was a pretty quick transition, and this is completely uncharted territory this year. But, I mean, the Bruins came out with great results. Yeah, so we finished our indoor season, and... We kind of didn't know whether Sand was going to start like start and continue, so once we heard about it, we just jumped on the boat and we started like the next week and our Stein, our coach told us obviously you know things it's our new season, so it's not going to be the best turnout, but just stay positive and we just started practices and we all loved it and it was a great turnout and they just kept pushing us you know if we were getting down because we kind of got frustrated because it's a new sport. Um, they told us, you know, it's brand new, everything's fine, you know, that's what learning is. So it was a great experience, and all of us really want to continue on the next years at UCLA. So. A couple of the greatest players in beach volleyball history, uh, Holly McPeak and Elaine Youngs, were UCLA players. They played indoor, of course, there was no sand volleyball. But how great is it that you can come out and actually practice out on the sand and hopefully go on to international Olympic competition? Yeah, it's a great experience because the Olympics has sand volleyball, so it's just good. You know, I think definitely all schools should start becoming, you know, having the sand volleyball program. It's just a great experience. and more girls who want to play volleyball can start playing sand and I know a lot of clubs in California are starting to do sand volleyball so yeah I've, it's kind of sad that the other you know older players didn't get sand volleyball but I think it's a great experience and the next like three years here that I have I really want to play sand. Rachel you guys go back indoors for the fall season how do you think playing on the sand is going to affect or help your indoor game? I definitely think it's going to help it a lot. I think our volleyball IQ overall has raised like immensely from playing on the sand, just having to deal with situations that we wouldn't normally have to deal with in, indoors, like having to work through things. We don't get as much coaching on sand, especially during a match, and having to just self-coach ourselves through situations and really just rely on one other person out there has just taught us so much. And, and obviously the physicality side, playing on sand instead of a hard court has helped our physicality immensely. So I think going back to indoor is not going to be a problem at all. Rachel, you were also a part of the Bruin first this season in sand volleyball, winning the first pairs match with Maddie Kleinman. How does it feel to be a part of UCLA history forever? You're always going to be a part of that group that helped win the first match. It was, it was an awesome feeling, honestly. I mean, we were joking. We were like, yes, we're a trivia question now. We're always going to be a trivia, <laughs> yeah, a trivia question. question. It's really fun. But, I mean, the thing that Stein really was proud of, proud of us um, during that match was we, it was the first time that we had a game plan, and we stuck to it, and it, it ended up working. And he was just he was just really proud of us because we pulled through and won the first match that way. Carly, I know in outdoor in beach volleyball, serving is very important. Obviously, with only two players in the court, you got to pick the right spot. And you had a match up at Zuma. We played Pepperdine, I think, and it was really windy. How hard is it to adjust to conditions like wind when you're playing outdoors? Yeah, serving and definitely passing is a big thing in beach volleyball. So that's why I think for Ray and I, passing is really key, and that's kind of why we can beat some teams because with the serving and wind, it's hard to you know get a hold of the ball. And since we're kind of quick defensive players, it's better for us just to keep our passing really in sync. So when we try to serve, yeah, sometimes you have to you know throw it lower or. Be careful because the wind just takes the ball. And at Zumba, it was crazy winds. Like, you could barely pass the ball over the net. So, yeah, it's definitely an experience, and we start doing that more in practice about serving and the wind and reading the wind. Scouting had to be interesting this year because you didn't have any beach experience with these players. You were judging them by what they do on the indoor and, you know, the six-on-six -six game. How hard was it to scout the opposition this year? So before games, we usually watch the players and kind of just get a hold of like what, you know, their main shots are, like kind of their hitting swings. And Stein kind of helped us out on that. And we had some coaches, you know, on our staff just watching and see their tendencies and stuff. But yeah, usually you, you don't really know. And for the few first points, you just have to kind of see what they're doing and just guess kind of like their main shots and just go with that. So that's been definitely a huge learning curve. And I think 
learning from doing that to also indoor. You can read players, and it's, it's helped a lot. Did you have any players who played beach volleyball that you admired as you were starting your volleyball career? I mean, definitely as I was younger, Missy May and Carrie Walsh, everyone knows about them. And I, I mean, Missy May Trainer, she's a great, just like role model to me because she's a smaller player and great at defense and everything and can hit. So definitely them too, I would say for most people, it's like we love them. <laughs> Rachel, this year the, the team already has two Bruins that have earned All-American honors. And I mean, you're saying you look up to Missy May and Carrie Walsh, but it's got to be a great feeling to have older Bruins that you can look up to. It's amazing. I mean, with Meg Norton, she's in Poland right now playing on the national team. It's crazy to see that some of them, maybe our teammates could future, be in the Olympics in the future. It's just, it's so fun and exciting. One of your teammates on the indoor team and also on the beach team, Kelly Reeves, uh, had her own little video feature on UCLABruins.com. You guys got to be guests on that show. <laughs> what was it like being interviewed by one of your teammates? It was just fun. I mean, she's, she's awesome. She's a great teammate and captain and it was just, it's great to like represent on the website and just so that everyone can see what we're doing out there. You've both finished your freshman year. A lot of stuff happened in the freshman year. Tell us about your first year at UCLA. Yeah, it was a great experience in the beginning, you know, always nervous and a little scared, but the coaches and everyone, everyone at UCLA has been great helping us, always there, like, do you need anything, supporting us. So I would say definitely I couldn't have done it without the UCLA staff here and yeah, I mean, volleyball, you kind of get used to it. We've been playing it our whole lives, so that's kind of staying the same, but definitely playing at a college level, it's a whole different experience. You know, the girls are bigger, hitting harder. So definitely I think our first season just adjusting to that was a little tough, but after now you're, you're comfortable with it and, yeah. UCLA women's volleyball has always been a powerhouse, and if there was ever a school made for the beach, it's in Westwood. <laughs> so thank you for joining us, Carly, Rachel. Pleasure to have you on the show and look forward to great things throughout your careers. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back with more UCLA Bruin Talk after this brief public service announcement. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Hi everybody and welcome back to Bruin Talk. It is now time to honor our Student Athlete of the Week. This week we honor Kevin Kramer as our Athlete of the Week. Kramer was an integral part in the Bruins' success in the NCAA Los Angeles Regionals. In the Bruins' 5-3 win over San Diego State, Kramer hit a sacrifice fly to score teammate Pat Gallagher. In the following game against Cal Poly, Kramer hit another sacrifice fly to drive in a run, leading the Bruins to a 6-4 victory. In their final game of the weekend against the University of San Diego, the Bruins ended strong with a 6-0 victory, qualifying for the NCAA Super Regionals. Congratulations, Kevin. We wish you luck in postseason. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at uclabruins.com. And now we're going to talk about a success story. We have visited before with Madeline Brooks, who walked her way on to the UCLA women's basketball team but she had no idea what was going to happen at the team banquet this year when head coach Corey Close announced to the world and to Madeline that she's going to be a scholarship player next year. Madeline, you had to be floored. I was very excited, Dave. <laughs> very excited. <laughs> well, let's talk about your odyssey. It's really quite a remarkable story. You came into UCLA, mm -hmm. not a member of the team, mm -hmm. no scholarship offer. Mm -hmm. You didn't know Corey Close. Nope. Tell us about the package you put together, the presentation you made to, to, to walk your way onto the team. After I had recovered from some injury during my senior year, I decided that my body was healthy again and I wanted to play. I've always been a competitor and playing basketball was a huge part of my life and I wasn't ready for that to be done. So I walked into Coach Close's office and I just said, look, this is what I can bring to the table. This is what I want to do. I don't care if I don't get any playing time. I don't care if I travel or not. Um, but I want to be here and I think I can affect your program and thankfully she gave me the opportunity and obviously she has felt you've affected her program in a very positive way how, how does this change things now being on scholarship I think that it, I would hope that it would not change anything um, I would hope that my work ethic and um, who I believe I am off and on the court would say the same um, regardless of uh, the money behind my, my new journey here but 
um, either way, I'm just really thankful for um, her opportunity she's given me. In the past two seasons, you've really embraced the role as team leader, both vocally and by example. And your work ethic is something that everybody seems to talk about constantly. And so how have you embraced that role? You haven't, as you mentioned, gotten the quite as bit of playing time as some of the other girls, but you've been just as important a player as anybody else. I think that's a really fine line I'm walking, and I fail every day, but thankfully my teammates support me in that. Um, I try to do whatever I can whenever I can do it, um, whether that means if I'm out of a drill in practice, I run sprints or I run stadiums in poly. Um, if I do get reps, I make sure I watch Thea or Naira or whoever's ahead of me, and I, I try to model them as best I can. Um, I do a lot of mental reps in my head, which helps uh, learning to do that still. Um, probably we'll still have to get better at it in the coming years, but um, it's, it's been great. And I want to talk a little bit about the team this past season. You guys had an incredibly successful season, made a postseason run, unfortunately got knocked out by Oklahoma, who you guys had previously beaten earlier on in the season. But what were some of the highlights this year, this year for you guys? I know it was a great season. Mm -hmm. We had one of the best in our history, I believe, um, second best season overall, which I'm really thankful for. Um, we had great team chemistry compared to my freshman year. We were so close off the court, um, and I think that's only going to grow next season. Um, I think one of the biggest differences in our team this year was our bench. Um, I'd like to think I have a small part in that, but we just got excited for each other, like genuine passion for the game and love for the game. Um, we were all in, all together, all the time, which is a theme that Coach Close expresses on us every day. Um, so I just think that that led the girls who were on the court to feel supported and knew that all of us were engaged, and I think it was a difference maker. There's just a great photo that was captured, and it was actually on the ESPN website, when the Bruins beat Cal in the Pac-12 semifinals. Mm -hmm. I mean, Cal's a team that went to the Final Four. The Bruins were up by 27 points on them mm -hmm. in that game before some baskets made it close at the end. But the bench was falling over themselves just <laughs> supporting the players out on the floor. Yeah. You really sensed that team chemistry. Yep, yep. We rallied each other. We danced on the bench and did cheers. It was great. <laughs> now, your game, uh, Madeline, you're a good three-point shooter, and the Bruins have been, the last couple of years, kind of a post-oriented offense, mm -hmm. going through Alicia Brewer this year with Jasmine Dixon down low. But it's going to be a more wide-open game now with uh, those players moving on. You're going to get an opportunity to get out there and bomb some threes, aren't you? I hope so. We're, we're working on an offense that works um, a lot of down screens, cross screens, so that's going to leave a lot of open room for shooters or the roller. So. Hopefully, if I get a shot next year, I can drain a couple. You talked about the ability to travel, and I know you did travel with the team. And one of the great highlights of last season was a trip to New York. And the whole team got to take in a Broadway musical. Now, you were very excited, I know, about that. But some of your teammates had never had that experience. Right. Tell us about sharing that experience with some of the players. It was funny to see their faces. Um, they were a little nervous, possibly out of their element. But um, I think it's good. For everyone to do those kinds of things sometimes um, definitely brought us closer. I think New York was a turning point at St. John's, definitely when we took a step in together um, and decided that going into Pac-12 play, we really needed to get our stuff together, and we did. I know that basketball runs in your family, and we've talked a little bit about your journey from a walk-on to now a scholarship athlete, but I want to touch on your journey just getting into basketball in the first place. How did that happen? I played on my first team when I was about three years old, I think. <laughs> I played with boys. <laughs> I have 20 cousins who lived in my hometown, and um, we played in the backyard on the blacktop every day, day in and day out, all summer long. Um, I come from a line of teachers and basketball coaches, so um, I guess you can say I was bred to, to love the game. <laughs> Your odyssey, we've talked about the determination you had to make yourself known and to get onto the team. What advice do you give those players in high school right now who don't think they might have a shot to play at the D1 level? I think the best piece of advice is to don't let anyone tell you you can't. Um, I came out of high school and people are like, oh, you're injured, or oh, she's recruited by Ivy Leagues and D2s. But you know what? Um, don't let anyone tell you you can't do it because you can. There's always opportunity. And I think that um, one of John Wooden's sayings is that Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard, and I believe that through and through. You, in addition to being a student athlete at UCLA, you're working in the recruiting department in blue and gold. Tell us what it's like helping to attract <laughs> student athletes to UCLA. <laughs> Not only do I like sports, but I like athletic administration. <laughs> so getting to work back there with Mike and Mariella and Allison is great. Um, I, love, I love it every day. Um, giving tours to the athletes is the best part because you get one-on-one -on -one interaction. Um, you get to hear about their stories and compare it and then just let them know that UCLA is the most outstanding university in the country. 
I know you've, you're obviously been involved in sports for your entire life, just like you said, but mm -hmm. in the future, after your time here at UCLA, are you looking for a career in sports? What kind of goals do you see for your future? I would hope to enter into the sports broadcasting business. Um, I'm really comfortable speaking about basketball, baseball, football. Um, it excites me. It's what makes me grow every day, I believe. I'm really passionate about it, and um, I don't see myself leaving the sports world, so either sports broadcasting, maybe coaching. We'll see. We'll see what the journey has for me. What, what do you think some of the highlights are of your first two years here in Westwood? I think I am very appreciative of the relationships I've made with my teammates. Um, wins and losses, you remember some, you, remember, you don't remember some, but um, I'll always remember the people that I've come in contact with and how they've made me feel and how we grew together. I think that's the most important part of college. It's got to be interesting watching some of your teammates in other areas. Naira Fields has been playing with a Canadian national team this summer. One of your teammates is out there playing for a country. That's got to be mm -hmm. cool. It's amazing. My teammate is so talented. Our whole team is very talented, so very thankful to be here. <laughs> Let's look forward to the upcoming season. We mentioned okay. some of the Bruins' bigs have moved on. Mm -hmm. Corey Close came in with a reputation for offense, although she says she wants to teach defense and rebounding, mm -hmm. but you got to feel like that she's going to begin to have a chance to implement some of her offensive strategies. And I will testify to the fact that half or more than half of our practice is defensive oriented, um, but Coach Close is a very strong offensive mind. Um, again, like I said, we're working on an offense that um, is going to really open up, spread the court uh, for our point guards. We have a lot of quickness this year um, and a lot of great shooters, um, good ball handlers. So hopefully all of our staff's minds will put together something that's really special. I know you talk about broadcasting, Madeline. Do you ever think about going into coaching? I would love coaching, definitely. Always have loved it. I've, I coached um, middle school girls in high school and Maybe college coaching is in my future. Well, at the banquet, when you did receive your scholarship, you were actually up on the podium describing an award you thought that you were giving to another teammate, but that ended up being your own award. So you wrote a speech about a, a teammate that you thought was excelling in every area of life, and you were talking about yourself. How did that make you feel? You had to have been shocked. I was thoroughly shocked. I gave the uncommon speech, which is a major theme in our program to become uncommon women um, off and on the court. And Coach Close gave me the topic and just said, talk about whatever you want. You're presenting the award. And I said, great. So I talked about how our team is sacrificing so much mentally, emotionally, physically every day. Um, I talked about a little bit about our seniors and what they meant um, in that process and growing in our program. And then I sat back down and I thought my time was over. I said, cool, you know, whatever. And then Coach Close got back up there and she said a little something nice about me and I was like, great, I'm done. And, um, and then she called me back up and I was thoroughly shocked. Um, I think you could see it in my face. My parents were next to me and they started crying. Um, the whole room stood up. I just felt really supported, um, very surprised and very thankful. And the great thing, Madeline, it's not only a great story, but it's not done. It's, you're halfway through your college career, there's a lot in the future. Hmm. So best of luck and Thank you. best wishes to the future. Thank you. <laughs> That's wrapped up all too quickly. We've enjoyed the time, but our time is up. We're going to say goodbye from Westwood. Allison, it's been fun. For Allison Taylor, I'm Dave Marcus. I'll see you next time with another edition of UCLA Bruin Talk. Until then, so long from Westwood.